In September the 4th of 1977, I was 17 years old, and I was brutally raped and left in the weeds unconscious. I was on my way to a birthday party for my sister. It was at night. When I came to, I don't know how long I was out, I scrambled my clothes and put on what I could, and I stumbled out of the weeds. And uh, at that time, a gentleman picked me up on his way to work. He seen me bleeding, and he seen me coming out of there struggling. And he took me home to my mother, where when she opened the door, I fell in, bloody, swollen up, beaten, unraveled, and she immediately took me to the hospital. And once we was there, they performed the rape kit from head to toe. But unfortunately, time went by, time went by, and they never came to my home. They never came back to talk to me or my mother. She would call and ask, you know, uh, what's happening with my daughter's rape kit? Oh, we're still processing it. An organization uh, known as uh, Rape Victims Advocates uh, from Chicago uh, approached me uh, and brought with them uh, Rosa Pickett and suggested that there needed to be a law. Uh, a law to uh, do what was necessary in order to make sure that rape kits uh, that are sitting on the shelf, oftentimes in evidence rooms uh, of police departments uh, throughout the state of Illinois, and for that matter, throughout the United States, uh, that those kits needed to be analyzed. The young man approached me several years later. He asked me, he said, do you know me? And I'm like, no, <laughs> where should I know you from? And he's like, you don't know me? You sure you don't know me? I'm like, no, I don't know you. Where, where would I know you from? Then he said, don't you remember you was walking down the street one night? And when he said that, I automatically knew who he was. I went to the police that same night, and I said, I know who he is, I know who he is. And uh, they asked me, what, when was the rape, when did the rape take place? And I told him September the 4th, 1977. He told me, he said, Rosa, if we go and pick him up, there's nothing, can, we will have to release him because the, the statutes of limitations are ran out on you. So at that point, I realized that this man had got away with what he did to me. Her story is not uncommon, that uh, throughout the United States, there are upwards of 400,000 rape kits that uh, have gone unanalyzed uh, uh, and evidence not brought forth. We have upwards of six to 7,000 uh, kits that are, are sitting on shelves, lying dormant, uh, presumably. Uh, in police departments throughout uh, the state of Illinois. Once this bill is, now that it's been passed out of the Senate, and once it's passed in the House, goes to the governor, presumably the governor will sign it, uh, victims will now have a tool that they can work with to insist that local law enforcement uh, do their part and analyze these kits. They, they will say that, look, we no longer have a statute of limitations, and by golly, I'm going to be here forever, if necessary, to make sure that this, this work gets done. They can go in hiding until the statute of limitation run out like the gentleman did me, and then resurface on us later on after he didn't got away with it. This law is to stop that person from continuing his madness, you know, and stop hurting these women and these children and these men. You know, it's time to put a stop to this type of violence.